This is part two in our series on how to repair a corner of a home where the foundation has cracked and is sinking into the ground. Part three to the video will show you how to fix the concrete foundation. And if you are going to cut a straight line, this might not be required, but uh, some engineers require it. And if you are going to cut a straight line, make sure that you do it before you assemble the uh, support uh, uh, beams here. And you can see that we have, we're using a couple of blocks. You're going to want to make sure that the beams are level and that they are uh, at least an inch and a half off of the ground so that you can finish the concrete um, when you are uh, when you re-pour the concrete section here so three and a half inches would be perfect that should be enough to um, uh, get some trowels underneath the uh, and a screed board something like that underneath the uh, support beam now you are going to make need to make sure also that the blocks anything that you use to support the beams um, is away from the building enough so that you can put some form boards next to the building so that uh, So just don't put any any um, Support posts right up against the building keep them about three inches away would be fine uh, This uh, particular method requires two beams one on each side with a couple of support beams underneath or that are going to sit on top of the beams that will be underneath the jacks you can see here the beams. Uh, I can't really provide you with the beam sizes um, because, you know, if I said, hey, use a 4x12 and you're repairing, repairing a section that's 25 feet long, that's not going to work. Um, a section like this, maybe a 12 foot repair, uh, 4x12 should work fine on a single story home with a, you know, I would imagine even with a tile roof, but I, I can't say that because. Let's say that you have a home that's uh, 20 foot wide with composition shingles. Something like this would work fine, single story home. If you have a single story home that's uh, 60 foot wide and uh, tile on the roof, something like this might not work. So it might be a little too much weight. So I will leave that up to you on uh, what you use to repair something like this. In our video, we have a four by 12 sitting on top of four by 12 blocks and um, six by six post with a four by four post above the jack and i'm just kind of went to this uh this uh part of the video to give you an idea about keeping the blocks away from the foundation very important as i mentioned already um do you need how many of these are you going to need i just threw this in here um, you know, uh, do you need to put a jack every um, 16 inches or two feet? I don't know. You know, again, it goes back to the amount of weight that you're, you're going to be supporting. The uh, jacks are underneath the wall. You can see here these two support posts are underneath the header. And these two support posts are underneath the wall top plates. And what you're going to want to do when, once you get everything set up is to raise it just a little bit at a time. Maybe a half inch, half inch, half inch, something like that. You can work your way back. This might You might raise this up an inch, this up three quarters of an inch, this one up a half inch, and this one a quarter of an inch. It all depends on um, how you're doing it and, and uh, what you're doing, but do it in small increments. And it wouldn't be a bad idea also to have support posts or while you're raising the wall framing, if the bottom plate is separating from the concrete foundation, put some blocks underneath the bottom plate. If the bottom plate has been removed, uh, maybe put some blocks underneath the framing studs. If the framing studs have been removed, maybe cut some, uh, install some more framing studs. Um, so that you can have additional support. The last thing you want to do is have one of these jacks fail or have something else fail around here, or fall off, and uh, you're stuck with a building that uh, slams right back down to the ground. So keep that in mind when you are raising everything. It's always nice to have additional security. 
And trust me, whenever I do a project like this, I like to have as much security as I possibly can. And, uh, and I have a bunch of different systems I use for that, but uh, I'm not gonna be going into all of them here uh, in the video. But I am going to put a link to the video, the first video and to the third video at the end of this video. And I might even put a link in here somewhere to where you can go to a couple other videos. Don't forget to visit our website, click on the repairs tab, and then go to the framing link. That's usually where you're going to find more information about these types of repairs. And I believe I have a video in there on how to support something like this from the outside also. Here you can see that the framing plates have been raised and back to where they should be. Concrete foundation can now be removed. And uh, I went ahead and moved a couple of these jacks around to give you another idea, just throwing some, throwing some more stuff out there. Again, we can see the bottom plate here. Um, you might want to remove the bottom plate. Um, this way you can finish the concrete, be easier to finish the concrete, but I'm gonna leave that up to you. If you, uh, can, if you can straighten it out and everything looks good, leave it, uh, leave it in there, uh, that's fine. I went ahead and took one of the jacks out that was underneath the window header and then moved it over to here. You know, again, something like this might only require three jacks total. It might require five jacks. Hydraulic jacks can leak, don't forget about that. And uh, I don't recommend jacking something up and leaving it using the jacks as a support unless they're screw jacks. Um, hydraulic jacks can leak, and then if one of them leaks, it could put pressure on the other jacks, causing them to leak. Or if you used smaller jacks, they were too small, you might also have a problem. And again, they sell some heavy-duty jacks, like 10 to 20 ton hydraulic jacks. I can't provide you with the information on that either, what you would need to use. Um, I'm guessing for a situation like this, um, a five ton jack would be more than enough using a variety of them or a few of them for something like this. But uh, when you are finally done, it wouldn't be a bad idea to replace the support post and the jack with a solid support post. And uh, if you do that, it wouldn't be a bad idea to attach that post to the framing plates. Now, one more thing I'd like to point out is that uh, before you even start jacking anything up, uh, make sure that the tops of the support post are attached to the framing plates because it's not going to be uncommon to lift one part of the wall. Take the pressure off of the jack here. Let's say I raise this up an inch. Now I got a three quarter inch gap somewhere. It's either going to be at the in between the top of the support post and the bottom of the framing plates which more than likely it would if you don't have a, the, um, if it's not attached here. And if that's the case, the post could loosen up and fall. And if your body parts are in the way, you aren't going to be feeling good. Same thing could happen at the bottom. Uh, wouldn't be a bad idea to run uh, or create some type of a support system. For this, you could uh, nail or screw a one by four onto each side of the walls to make sure that the posts don't come out of their place and uh, whack you in the side of the face. You'll be raising this thing up here. You got your support. You got your connection up here. Everything's great. Um, the gap is now loosened up between the top of the jack and the bottom of the post. And this thing's going to want to swing either way. And that's not going to feel good if your face is near it either. Now, make sure that when you do remove the jack that you attach the support post with um, some type of hardware. You can use scraps of wood, um, whatever is going to work. And you can always attach these support beams together also. And use screws or nails. Screws are nice for something like this because they can be removed easily. And if you need to, drive some stakes into the ground for your um, support blocks. You can attach them together with the stake. And uh, your main objective is going to uh, prevent anything here from moving in either direction. And um, are you going to need to put braces on the um, walls? Well, not if the rest, if, if you're only working on a section of building, the rest of the home is going to prevent this thing from going this way. 
um, side to side. But if it's a small building and uh, you're working on the entire wall, you are going to need some type of a bracing system to make sure that this wall does not go from left to right also. And if, if the roof is sheeted and still intact, that might be enough to prevent it from going uh, in either direction. One last thing I would like to mention is that this project or this method of construction repairs might not work for everyone. You need to keep that in mind. If you have loose soil, um, that could also be a problem. You might need to um, even pour a concrete pad, something to um, keep it from sinking into the ground. It's really hard to say. It depends on how much weight is involved. And uh, again, a lot of factors here. If you had muddy soil, this would make sense. You uh, might need to, um, you know, dry the soil out, you might need to put some gravel down, something like that. You start raising the building up and you notice that your blocks are disappearing into the ground, then you might need to uh, come up with another idea to support them. Um, you could always extend these, these uh, beams farther too. If you have a sidewalk over here, you could extend the beam over onto the sidewalk and put the support uh, blocks underneath that. Um, again, I can't cover everything in here. And uh, if there are any other things you think of, hey, feel free to leave them in the comment area. And if I think we need to make another video, I will be glad to do it.